What's up, everybody? This is going to be good. It's 2024, and you're all wondering how SEO is evolving. Oh, so that's what we're going to be talking about. Thanks for asking. And SEO has evolved over the last few years. It's not just about rankings and traffic and getting leads from that from those rankings and traffic. SEO is so much more now. We should probably change the acronym, Rob. Rob, welcome to Ignite. Hello. He's excited to I be here, excited. clearly. Uh, so I need more energy. <laughs> we shouldn't do these at tooth hurdy anymore because that's the time you go to the dentist. All right, so we're talking about SEO here and like there's some major changes happening or major different ways to look at it as not just a ranking vehicle anymore as it relates to a multi-site provider group type marketing and healthcare. How is SEO evolving in your mind? Like what do you, you run the whole known and earned shop here at Cardinal. How are you pivoting the team to start thinking? Yeah, I think the key is we try to look at it far more holistically now than we did years ago. What's right? included now that wasn't before? We look at it through a much more patient customer experience lens. So it goes far beyond just the visibility of your keyword popping up and having your name appear and goes all the way through that actual, I like to call it the handshake. It's sort of the handshake of that ad, that listing, that ranking uh, to the actual experience on page. And it's the same way Google's looking at it. Uh, and the other, the other landing or the other search engines is they want the customer experience to be the best it can be. It yep. should be relevant. It should be topical. You should have authority. Uh, and it should help you take that patient to where they want to go. They came with an intent. They searched something very specific in that box. So it's not just about showing up at the top of the box yeah. with keyword stuffing and right, uh, you know, just content out the, the wazoo. It's getting them to that answer. Uh, mm -hmm. And the algorithms have come a long way to reward that. Mm -hmm. right? So it actually is uh, not just about doing what's right by the customer, but it actually now what does right by the customer is more likely to also do right by Google. Yeah, it's easier, it's harder to beat the robots now. Chat GPT created a whole bunch of sameness in the content. So ranking really got difficult as it should because like, you know, everybody's saying the same thing. So how are we producing better, more unique content? Do we get MDs or NPs involved so that the content has a better chance of ranking and helping the patient convert? A big difference. So what we've seen a lot of when we meet a client to where we take a client hinges on a strategy. I think there are so many organizations out there who are like, we need great content, we need to create something compelling, something unique, but they don't associate it with an actual SEO strategy. What is the topical area that we are trying to dominate, where we're trying to appear? What's the intersection of demand and, and opportunity? So what, what they're good at, what, what they can rank for, what their company does well, and what people are actually searching. You just see, you see misfires on that all the time. People say, we dominate this keyword. And it's like, yeah, it only gets searched twice a month, yeah. right? Like, so, yeah. so who cares? Um, and I think once you're able to do that, then you're really able to create content that goes beyond just cranking it out in AI. And how do you get and people involved that are within the organization to create better content than the competitor down the street and still rank for podiatrist near me. Yeah, it comes down to a little bit of motivation. Uh, I think there's a human element of it. Um, you know, we work with, for example, doctors all the time and they'll say, I wanna write it this way. This is the way it is, this is how it should sound. And usually what we'll push back on them is, that's great and we could do it your way and five people will read it. Or if you'd let us help you, we can give you some guidelines. We can, you know, give you some keywords, give you a little bit of strategic focus, maybe even some structure and, and you know, some H1, you know, H2, some technical stuff to, to lean in on. Uh, and I can get you generally, you know, 90% of the same message to, you know, 500 people yep. instead of the two people who might have read it uh, yep. in an unoptimized state. So that usually helps them say, okay, you know what, I will listen. Right, let me actually hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. It's not all mumbo jumbo, because at the end of the day, what is a, you know, generally a doctor provider? Anyone who works with, with patients want to do, I mean, hopefully <laughs> it's help more mm -hmm. patients. And we hear this term digital front door quite a bit now. A lot of our larger provider groups are coming and say, we want to revisit our digital front door and kind of redo some things. And what does that mean and how, what, components do organic and content play in there? Yeah, I think digital front door, it's a good name, right? It's a good good metaphor for it. Uh, it's that first that first opportunity for a potential patient or, or you know, friend of or parent of or daughter of patient uh, to get and meet your brand, who you are, what you stand for. Um, you know, I think still a lot of brands are out there using their digital front door to, to stand as a resume. Have you seen our new facility? Have you seen our cool new doctor? And they're missing the fact that no, like that's not what patients care about. You need to make that front door patient obsessed, patient centric. Yep. Uh, and you need to build it in a way to enable them to have 
success. Mm -hmm. And so what does success look like? Well, it depends. Mm -hmm. It might be finding a provider. It might be deciding you do need, you know, some behavioral therapy. Uh, and I think creating a site that is structured in a way that has a strategy to help those patients get there. So creative that resonates, right? Um, a keywords, that, you know, focused on helping them find the, and get to from intent to sure. completion. Um, but really also gather that data. That front door doesn't have to be, it's not the only door in. So once someone comes in the front door, how are you informing them? How are you giving them the information they need to almost self-identify? So when they come back, they might Google search a much more specific set of keywords and come in through a side door. And so that front door doesn't have to be all things. And I think that's that's a mistake a lot of organizations make is they try to make the front door like, oh, it's our careers page, it's our provider page, it's our portal page, it's this, it's that, it's the other thing. It doesn't have to be all those things. It can just be that first impression page that helps someone really get to understand and know you. Yeah, I love that. And so a lot of educational content there. And then how does patient experience and access play into how people should be thinking about SEO and content and website structure going into this year? You know, patient experience should be central, right, to how how you're constructing your site. And I think that's where you need to understand what what is that journey that your site can give a potential patient. Uh, where you know, simple sometimes it's so simple looking at things like your content, doing your content audit, and understanding here are the types of journeys that you know patients yep. are going across our our website. Where do we have content? Where do we have too much content? Where do we have no content? How are we servicing them through this? Uh, are there gaps? Are there opportunities? Where are we really good? Maybe you see some companies who are really, really strong at informational. They have they own certain topical keywords, like yep. they'll tell you the pollen count and you know the area, uh, but they don't have anything that connects you to an allergy, you know, approach or care. Um, and, and you know, every everyone's kind of got different they educate, but different don't challenges. Convert, yep. Exactly. Other other clients are going to be the opposite, and they'll have all this stuff focused on like find a location, find a location, find a location, but they never actually sold themselves. So all they're doing is capturing people who are already in agreement, yeah, they need a podiatrist or something, and they're not actually helping connect them to, you know, their their care network or their, you know, their approach to care. They're not educating them at all. They're just basically hoping they got a referral and then making their site a conversion rate optimization machine. Mm -hmm. um, but then they're losing the the actual machine. I mean, it's, it's an asset that they're not taking advantage of. Their, their site's not hunting. And so your team, when you're looking at a client site and experience, you're saying, not only do we need to put keywords in the right places, but we have to convert a patient when they come. So making sure the right call to actions, but the right ability to book appointments. Are we also looking at the UX of websites? Does how much of that plays in or do we just focus drive leads, drive through rankings? Yeah, we certainly look at the user experience. Usually the first problem to tackle is, are we getting visibility? Are we getting traffic? And the second piece is now that we have it on the site, is it doing what we hope? Is it driving to an increased conversion? I mean, once you hit a certain threshold of traffic, a couple percentage points in conversion rate or you know, improved yeah. UI UX can make a much bigger difference in, in patients and in, in how many patients you care for uh, than trying to drive you know, the net net uh, of, of traffic. Right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, you gotta have, you gotta match the intent. That's the first piece. When people, someone clicks, they come to a site, you gotta make sure you're taking care of that intent and you wanna make it familiar, you wanna make it natural. Everyone kind of knows what the internet looks and feels like now. People can go to a site and even if you're not UI UX expert, you can kind of tell right away like, oh, this is well, I understand this well. I can navigate this well. There's a lot of ways to lose someone on a website. Mm -hmm. So it takes, it takes care. That's so it all starts with an audit to evaluate what kinds of content that you have, whether it's educational or it's bottom of the funnel conversion and then make sure the educational leads them to the next step, make sure the conversion type stuff actually can convert. And you guys look at the layouts of websites, evaluate whether the UX is productive, whether it's going to work now. What are some of the favorite tools our team loves using? Is it the tried and true? Yeah, no, it's a lot of the tried and true. I mean, you're going to have all your first party data. It's a key place to start. Your your search console, your your analytics platform, yep. hopefully a compliant one. Um, yep. You have the screaming frogs, the Ahrefs, the SEM rushes of yep. the world, which give you additional information and keyword, good competitor information there. Yep. Um, but again, I think that the tools are, there's only so much that, you know, the, the, the Googles of the world provide in SEO. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not so much getting the raw information, it's how you're looking at it, how granular you're getting, how specific you're getting, and what insights are you driving from that data. Okay. And what we've seen a lot of over the last year is that through COVID, it was really exciting. Just run lots more media, run more media because patients were plentiful, interest rates were low, so investment and money was also plentiful. And then things have started to change over the last year and now we're more cost conscious and SEO's back in vogue. How have you found 
that SEO plays really well into a company's paid media campaigns or effectiveness? Yeah, it's night and day between companies that have shown a long-term commitment to SEO and companies that have not. So we we work with certain organizations that come in and they dominate certain keywords so by such a broad margin that they're actually selling leads to other competitors in different regions because they can't service all the you know all the volume they're getting in through certain keywords. Yeah. Uh, and what it can do is create a very very scalable uh, from sort of a cost per acquisition. Um, uh, a scalable approach, right? Where you only have to invest, you know, a, a kind of consistent heartbeat of investment month over month, and you can kind of grow it over time. So even with the same investment, you could go from getting a hundred new patients, and then again, keeping your investment flat after a few good quarters, even a couple good years of SEO, suddenly you're still paying that same rate, but you're acquiring, you know, thousands of new patients with the same investment. Yeah. And that's not possible in other channels, right? Yep. Like there's diminished returns and there's sure that you can do paid media amazing, but there's still always going to be a diminished return. There's always going to be, you know, a cap there. Uh, and you see a lot of companies who come in, they're PE back, they're like, man, we got to hit this number tomorrow. And they kick the SEO can down the road and they put all the money towards paid. And then the next quarter, oh no, you know, they're asking for 10% more, kick the can down the road. Oh, there's still room. There's still room. Keep dumping in paid search. And then suddenly, Oh no, we're there, right? Now the incremental cost of this next paid lead is in, is painful. Yeah. It's it's a thousand, two thousand yeah. dollars where it was four hundred, two hundred. We love SEO now. Let's do yeah, SEO. Yeah, let's do SEO. When can it make an impact? Probably a year and a half yeah. ago. Yeah. That's probably when yeah. it could have made an impact. Yeah, and so it helps blend and make for an acceptable cost to an acquire a patient, and shouldn't be neglected because it's really if you think about paid media, all of the clicks on a Google SERP is only like what fifteen percent. That means eighty five percent don't go through PPC. They go through other channels, mm -hmm. and they'll click on the organic listings or maps. So Local, just yeah. just doing paid media alone it really doesn't work, and too many of our, our type of client kind of shuns away from SEO. And SEO, as we heard earlier, it's not just rankings right. on Google, it's looking at the whole experience. So it's like any SEO partner in-house or agency should be really looking at patient experience, access, how do we present ourselves? Are we convincing? Are we educating through our content? Mm -hmm. And are we allowing the patient to make a decision and find care in a quick manner? And that's how you're telling me SEO should look this year. Stop looking at just keyword stuff in a ringing and look at the whole patient experience. Yeah, make it a competitive advantage. It's not just there to capture your brand search. Mm -hmm. I mean, take a look, do one quick thing. Pull up SEM Rush, pull up a screen, you know, pull up, pull up one of those tools. Look at the keywords you rank for today. And if it's 80, 90, you know, plus percent brand keywords or just provider names, yeah. like, SEO is not hunting for you. It's just a net. Yeah. It's just a capturing. It's just a capture tool, and it's not growing your business. Do right? you see? Do you see Google search demand continuing to increase? Has it flattened out, or less people are using Google? Even SEO clicks are down across the board. What have we seen? No, search is still huge. Uh, I recently, I don't know the stat off the top of my head, but I did pull some numbers around, you know, when chat GPT was going through its heyday. Yeah, you know, yeah, is there yeah, a yeah. migration of searching going from Google to chat GPT? It was uh, such a, a small percentage of the total chat GPT volume was, you know, 2% of the total yep. Google volume. And Google also didn't see a 2% dip. <laughs> Google held serve. It was still growing. You've seen some changes. You see some of the, uh, some of the AI results in Google are popping up more. Yep. You see more what they call sort of no click searches where yep. people Google a question and it's the answer pops yeah, right up. That right? we that we generated, but we'll get no credit for it. Correct. Yeah. You won't get a click on it. But you know, if you yeah. Google, you know, clinic near me and the map shows up, yeah. like someone might just feel the need to drive to that clinic instead. And that might be considered a, a zero click, or maybe they'll call right off the right True. off the number True. and not ever actually click. Uh, so those are those are more prominent. Um, so it's changing some of the measurement structures there. Uh, but the fundamentals don't change. Even with some of the AI results, people are, are worried about that. But no, I mean, AI still has to glean this information from somewhere and it's going to pull from the people who have the authority, who have the good content, who have the good perspectives. And again, Google rewards you for positive engagements. And so people are reading your content and they're absorbing it and they like it and they're sharing it and mm -hmm. people are linking to it, then that's what yes. AI is going to, going to value when it, when it spits out its results. That's right. And link building uh, still matters. 
Yes. It, it, it does matter. Matters. Yeah, harder to gain, but the influential links, think about it. how else does Google find out if your content's better than anyone else on your website? So link building still matters. I don't care what Google says. When we get lots of links to even the Cardinal site, you see the rankings go up the next week, so. Yeah, it's a bit hit and miss. It's one of those sort of, it's almost like a home run derby. You know, you, you might hit a bunch of singles and every now and then you get a really solid link and it can make a huge difference. Yeah. And local, especially local. I mean, you connect a couple of those, you know, local Sponsor community your high school groups. team. Yeah, local community groups can, can you know, be a huge factor for, for yeah. local rankings and things yeah. like that. Yeah, SEO is fun. There's just as much demand coming to organic clicks as ever. It's so weird to me that it kind of got diminished. It's been dying since I started Cardinal 15 years ago in the news and like still not dead. Um, I love it. And we're hearing from all of our paid media clients, hey, we need to look at an organic program now because the CAC is just, you know, you're like renting you're yeah. renting the runway instead of owning the dress and then you just get tired of paying the lease yeah. on it every day. And you know, and the paid, unless up. you spend more on paid, you don't get more leads. But with organic, if you you know invest the same amount into it over time, it becomes an exponential return. So easier, Rob, to, easier to defend too against competition. I talk yeah, about that all the time. Yeah, because it's harder for them to come so up. So easy for someone to just dump money on the same keywords as you and paid and drive your efficiencies down. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, I like, the, I like the fear approach, right? You tell someone like, you're going to go into that meeting with your PE firm. We tell them, look, we're getting you know leads at $200 a click. Like we can scale that up, and suddenly a big competitor enters the market, dumps a paid search budget on you, and suddenly it's 300, and your entire forecast just went through the floor, and you're you're in trouble. You need them the money. You need 30% more to hit the same yep. same expectation. Not as easy to do uh, if you have a really solid, you know, long mm -hmm. running, you know, firm SEO program. Competitors can't just swing the door open no. and bonk you on the head. Like it takes time and it's easier to defend. Uh, and, so it's, it's an asset. And that's a great point because PPC has now been around for 15 years and healthcare marketers are catching up and healthcare in general is catching up to realizing that with the retailification, we all have to advertise. Advertisers have gotten smarter which means you can't hit your acceptable CACs without doing organic. Generally what we find, you're gonna be in, you're gonna lose money on the first patient encounter if you're just running PPC. In a lot of instances, you have to have a great retention, a reactivation program, and you have to blend SEO. And we're not taking lots of clients that just wanna hammer PPC all day long and aren't willing to invest in own media over time because we know we will fail if you just want to grow through paid media. It's just not scalable at a certain point. Yeah, so certain point. we love our advertising division though. Don't get me wrong. You just got to do both. Hey, all right. And you know the best part of SEO this year? You don't have to worry about pixels and hippies. So there you go. That's yeah. fun, right? Can't you don't, sued. right? Yeah, yeah. You can't get, SEO can't get you sued. So there you go. That's fun. As long as Google Analytics, I guess, probably yeah, maybe yeah. a little bit. But all right, Rob, thank you for joining us on Ignite. Yeah. It's been talk, it's been fun. We should title this The Business of SEO in 2024. The Business of SEO. That's what we talked about today, why it matters and how to change it, not just from rankings into something that actually educates patients and converts them to coming into your locations. Thanks for listening to this last crazy 12 minutes. Adios. Mm -hmm.